What's up, y'all? This is Henny. And listen, you know it. I got my hands on the iPhone 12 Pro. And uh, of course, there's been tons of videos on this phone so far. But thinking about this device and all that it can do, can this be your only all day, every day mobile content creator device? Or do you need something like this? This is the Sony ZV-1 and I've had it since it was released. It's an amazing compact camera and it does mobile content creation very, very well. The question is, did you upgrade to a device like the iPhone 12 Pro? Or maybe you should look into something a little bit different like the Sony ZV-1 if you're just getting started and you have a limited budget for cameras. I'm gonna try to help you out today, right now. Let's go! <laughs> So yeah, I've had the iPhone 12 Pro since Friday. It is Sunday and uh, I've kind of run it through its paces. We've had some good weather around Atlanta and we've had some kind of trash weather yesterday. So I've been trying my best to kind of get, you know, a comparison going between these two cameras for all of those looking to maybe look into a different camera system or looking maybe to upgrade their iPhone. First things first, let's just take this one out for a spin. All right, iPhone 12 Pro. Getting ready to hop on this grill, you know what I mean? This is week four of me and my wife's Whole30. This is our first time doing Whole30. You know, I'm still trying to get it in, make sure that we can have tasty foods that taste good, that don't have all the bad in it. Now, this is the wide lens on the iPhone 12 Pro. We are about to get in. Got a lot of stuff going on over here. Got these St. Louis ribs. Got these drumettes. You're gonna do this trout. Get it right, get it tight. Let me get the rest of these herbs. Now, when we talk comparison between these two, I mean, you know, they're worlds apart, right? This is, of course, one of the best smartphones made to date. And this is a compact one inch sensor size camera that can do amazing video for its size. Now, a lot of us, when we're upgrading these iPhones every year, upgrading our smartphones every year, we're really concerned about the quality of the cameras. And will it be able to do and give you the image quality that you need? Or do you want more convenience on the other end? Do you want or do you need a separate camera, something like this ZV-1, to be able to give you maybe a step up in image quality? Or do you want to step it up to something like, you know, a full frame DSLR mirrorless camera, like something like the a7 III you're seeing shot right here or are you looking for something more convenient that has a lot of computational photography videography capabilities inside a device that you can do so much more with given the fact that it's always with you it's always in your pocket let's start breaking this down now all right so what you're seeing right now is the sony zv1 i have it on a basic standard profile and i have it on a selfie stick i'll show you in a second how this looks but this is the shot that you will basically be getting you know just coming out of a sony zv1 nice walk i have it on active stabilization and you know i basically just have the wind muff that's supplied with the camera to be able to sit here and do a vlog like this it's good it's convenient right it's very lightweight it's small i mean i also got to carry this selfie stick if i want it to be this far away because if i don't in a second i'll show you without the selfie stick how it'll work now this is the same type of shot right i am on the iphone 12 Pro. I have it on the Shure MV88 Plus rig. What you see here is a full rig that's going to supply me with a mic and a little tripod to be able to give me this type of audio and this type of stability. But you know, we'll go handheld as well. But this is the wide angle lens, which is basically the equivalent to a like a 13 millimeter lens. And you got, you know, options to zoom or whatever with the, the triple lens setup. So this is that look and this is what this looks like. And now we're back on the ZV-1 without the selfie stick, still in active stabilization to make sure I can get the same type of stability. But you can see I'm cropped in a lot more. But hey, the question is, do you actually need an extra camera for your online content creation? Can you just use the iPhone and let it be everything that you need. Now say for instance, you don't have the budget for something like this, right? The Shure MV88 plus, you know, whole rig with the tripod, whatever. Leave that, it's probably like around 200 and something extra dollars. So you're just getting just this camera, just this phone. And this is the audio quality that you get. 
and this is the wide angle lens. Now I can go to a tighter lens, which is gonna give me even more image quality, but it's gonna have a tighter look. Let's switch to that. Now I'm on just the iPhone 12 Pro with the main wide lens, walking and talking. Let's check the stability and see exactly what it's looking like. But the main thing you're gonna have to realize is when you're vlogging like this, you really can't see yourself. You gotta basically hope that you're in frame and hope that you're not too close to the camera. Now this is the front facing camera of the iPhone 12 Pro, which most people will probably start using. Now I have side by side, I'm holding both the Sony ZV-1 over here and the iPhone 12 Pro here. I have the iPhone 12 Pro on ultra wide and I have the Sony ZV-1 as wide as it'll go with active steady stabilization. But if you're into just trying to vlog and try to figure out exactly what's gonna work for you, can you just use the iPhone or, or maybe you don't need to upgrade your iPhone and you wanna upgrade your camera. These are the two that most people in 2020 would recommend as the camera to go for, for starting online content creation. What about pics? photography images you know we talk a lot about online content creation as it relates to video but what about photography now let's kind of dive deep into that and see exactly the things that we can do between both so these are some of the shots that i've taken with the sony zv1 and as you can see you know it has a one inch sensor um and has pretty good dynamic range of course you can shoot raw with these cameras and you can really kind of dial in the image quality that the tone the feel that you like but on the other hand these are some of the pictures some of the vibes that i've taken with the iphone 12 pro and we all know with all this computational you know photography videography that goes on inside these cameras you can really tweak and uh, manage your files just as well, especially with the depth of field, you know, the portrait mode, all of these things. So you might see some differences, you might not, depending on your taste and what you're actually looking for with your photography, depends on, you know, the types of things that you shoot and what things you need to do with the devices that you're using. Now, what about battery life, right? Because, hey, you know, you, you're doing so much on a device like this, right? Be able to continuously keep up all day with battery. Uh, does this do you well versus something like this that has removable batteries that you can basically swap in and out of? Now, I'll tell you one thing. I started a new series, if you hadn't seen it, called Silent Beat Making. And uh, I'll link that up wherever, somewhere, so you can check that out. I'll tell you, the first couple episodes I was shooting with the Sony ZV-1, and I know that if you change the temperature to high in the settings of this camera, you should be able to get a very long runtime and be able to just let it go and shoot, right? So I had it top down on my rig over there where I kind of do all my music production and I kept running into overheating issues once I got to around 45, 50 minutes of continuous 4K shooting. And it was very frustrating given the fact that I'm trying to stay focused, doing, making music, music composition, things of that nature, and it overheats, I'm not looking up and I don't even know when the hell it stopped. And so I was frustrated about that and so I started to flip the way I recorded it and started using my iPhone 11 Pro. And I was actually worried. I was thinking to myself, is it going to have the same image quality that I'm used to? But thinking about it from, you know, shooting a top-down angle where I don't necessarily have to have such depth of field, I can basically have it on its wide camera setting and it gives me amazing image quality. And I really haven't had any complaints yet. And, you know, we're going up on uh, episode six coming up later on this week. So I'll tell you one thing, you know, using your phone, using, you know, the, the thing that you have with you all the time can still be just as much of a benefit as a bigger sensor camera like the Sony ZV-1. So let's also talk accessories because both of these can do multiple things, you know, when it comes to mobile content creation with accessories and building up kind of like a rig if you need it. Starting with the ZV-1, you know, of course, it has its own flip out screen. It basically can be a vlogger's dream. It comes with a wind muff where you can basically put that right over the hot shoe and it kind of protects the quality of you know your audio when you're outside winds blowing things of like that but you can also put in you know basically a different type of mic like something like this this is the Rode Video Micro and you know you can plug it directly in to the camera and basically get even better audio quality so you have that and then on top of that, you can buy it with its vloggers kit, which comes with kind of like a, a little handle remote style tripod. I opted not to get that. And I just use this selfie stick where I basically 
you know, tighten this up like this. And it'll give me a lot wider field of view when I can easily just kind of do something like that, vlog with that. And uh, I'm getting a wider angle view because I'm able to push the image further away from me. So of course you can, you know, accessorize something like the ZV-1 a lot and you can put a cage on it. You can do a lot with a camera like that. But let's not sleep on, you know, all the ways that you can rig up an iPhone 12 Pro, right? I talked about it earlier in the video. This is the Shure MV88 Plus uh, kind of kit where you basically just plug in the uh, mic directly into the lightning port of this iPhone 12 Pro. And now, you know, I can either shoot like this and have the audio facing me as I'm shooting or if I'm vlogging, you know, I can basically flip it around and know that I'm getting good, uh, you know, good audio quality, more stability, the same thing. And there's a million ways you can hook up, you know, and rig up these iPhones these days, put them on drones, all types of stuff. So, you know, I think when it comes to accessories, they both have their pros and cons, and it really just depends on what you need to do. But we gotta really focus in on convenience, if that is your thing. For me, it is quite a lot of the time. You know, being able to shoot directly on this, getting the quality that's amazing, that is already ready to go on my phone, and the fact that I'm already using a program like LumaFusion to, you know, edit video and export and distribute video directly to YouTube, you can do it all with this. So you basically shoot, edit, and distribute all from this device, and it's very convenient. With something like this, if you're doing what I'm doing and editing from phones, editing video from iPads, you know, you're going to have to take this out, you know, take the SD card out, import the, the video files into, you know, something like the file system on your iPad, you know, load those all into LumaFusion and go from there. It's not extremely inconvenient, but it also is another step to getting your content to your consumer. It's really hard to say as far as, you know, what, what I would recommend, you know, but I'll tell you this, you know, having had the iPhone 12 for the last three days and having had this Sony ZV-1 for months, um, if you have something like the iPhone 11, the iPhone 11 Pro, and you have been maybe doing mobile content creation with those devices, and maybe you're looking for a step up, this might be what you're looking for. 699 can do so much, can shoot well, slow motion, great pictures, the whole nine, easily fits in your pocket. It's a joy to use. I have had a few overheating issues when trying to do things over 45, 50 minutes in 4K, but other than that, this thing has been rock solid. But if you're coming from maybe an iPhone 8, iPhone 10 maybe, um, and you're looking to step up not only your phone but also your cameras, the iPhone 12 and 12 Pros are a significant upgrade to those iPhone 8, iPhone 10 cameras. And you know, the form factor, I love the squared edges, I love uh, the build quality, everything about this just, it just screams quality but it is truly a device that i see that you can take and start your mobile content creation career um and t start to take that to the next level and so all in all i'll say you really can't go wrong between the two it really just depends on your needs of photography and videography and where you're distributing you know because realistically Either of these will do well for Instagram, either of these will do well for Twitter, TikTok, all of those things. Even this, probably even better for TikTok and other things where you're going directly to uh, consumers from the app itself. But, you know, like, listen, all in all, these things are both amazing devices. And, you know, if I had to tell somebody, in, you know, one or the other in 2020 right now, and, you know, they have devices that are a few years old, I'm going to tell you to go with the iPhone 12 or 12 Pro. Now, I haven't tested the 12 Pro Max or the 12 Mini. Hopefully, I'll get those, uh, you know, be able to check out in the next few weeks. But all in all, I hope that uh, that this review, this kind of comparison could help you out in any way if uh, you're looking for, you know, an upgrade on any of these devices. So hopefully you got something from this and uh, I appreciate the support every time. And I hope you guys stay safe this week. I'll catch y'all in the next one. And I'm out!